Well, since the day the Radiant 7x AMD launched, we didn't really see all too much excitement within the community. But it needs to be said, it isn't actually a bad graphics card. In fact, it can somewhat compete with Nvidia's RTX 2080. And that's pretty impressive. However, I did overclock the Radiant 7 for you guys. And it seems the card's performance really seems to benefit from that. But that does come at a terrible cost. What exactly I'm talking about, some of you surely already know. But does overclocking really come to the rescue here? Could we possibly be talking of that or is the choice of words too extreme maybe? After all it's not like the Radiant 7 offers terrible performance or the likes. Actually it's quite the opposite. Anyway some of the results did manage to surprise me in a good way. Of course I'll show you guys how and with what settings I overclocked my GPU. And now let's go. As always, it needs to be said, not every graphics card overclocks equally as good. That's something I need to repeat over and over again because with these type of videos, there's always someone that gets confused since results and the overclocking success may vary. And I wanna avoid comments telling me I do this and that incorrectly, you know how it is. But oh well, as always for overclocking graphics cards, I'll be using the very popular tool named MSI Afterburner. Increasing the power limit alone won't do the trick here though at least not much. This is why we need to touch the GPU voltage today. Now in order to unlock that slider we need to go into the MSI afterburner settings and select unlock voltage control. Following that you'll have to restart the tool. So first off I set the power limit to its max. For the GPU voltage it currently says 1090 millivolts. Of course I already did all the testing beforehand and therefore know what works for my specific GPU which is why I enter one 1216 millivolts. The GPU clock I'm increasing to 1960 megahertz. The HBM2 memory to 1200 megahertz. In theory, depending on your airflow, you could or should adjust the fan speed or fan curve. However, as it's the case most of the time for me, it was not needed. The fans do a good job automatically ramping up once the temperatures start increasing. Important when touching GPU voltage, just as with CPUs, watch out and don't do crazy things. Because too much voltage can easily fry one's GPU. So don't go for crazy voltages, go by your gut feeling and always keep an eye on the temperatures. Either way, before overclocking, the GPU clocks at somewhere in the range of 1770MHz on average I'd say. And after overclocking, we're looking at about 1880MHz, which on top of the 200MHz memory clock increase is pretty good actually. But does this really improve performance in games, or rather by how much? And what was that big drop? Topic again I mentioned. You'll see. Have fun. So as you can clearly see, overclocking does seem to bring lots of extra performance to the table. By that I don't mean the performance was bad before tuning this GPU, but overclocking obviously does help here. In many cases an overclock seems to do more with the Radeon 7 than it does with Nvidia's RTX 2080. But to be fair, it needs to be said, I've overclocked the RTX 2080 only by touching the power limit and increasing clock speeds. In theory, you could unlock voltage control as well 
well and play around with it. At 1440p at least, those couple FPS more certainly could make a difference to the gaming experience to some of you. And I guess we wouldn't be complaining about extra performance, right? At 4K, on the other hand, the performance boost isn't as significant, which makes sense since the percentage doesn't really change all too much. Either way, the Radeon 7 does show an interesting new face when overclocked. There's definitely free performance on the table waiting for you. A particular strength of the Radeon 7, even at stock settings, is the super fast HBM2 memory. I believe this might be the reason behind why the 1% lows are looking so good as opposed to those on Nvidia cards. And now hold on tight there are certainly moments where such a Radeon 7 can outperform the significantly more expensive RTX 2080 Ti or at least can keep up with it in terms of 1% lows that is. That's a great feeling when games run perfectly smoothly. But sure, in many game titles Nvidia is just as good if not better. At the end of the day it comes down to the game and its optimization. However, there's not always an improvement visible as seen in GTA 5 for instance. With the card over overclocked, at 1440p I got 3 FPS less on average, but oh well, it's not the end of the world. Things are looking better at 4K, a whole 6 FPS more there. And yeah, what can be said about one specific game title? Crisis 3 and the Radiant 7 still seem to be at war, and as nice a free performance boost is, it comes at a cost. And that cost seems to be quite high with this AMD graphics card. For one, the temperatures at 88 degrees Celsius aren't looking too good, which also makes those three fans sound like tiny turbines. So the point is, hot and loud, very loud. Probably an even more unwelcome thing could be the pretty high power draw. Roughly 390 watts at stock isn't the best result to start with, but 450 watts is a whole different story. But sure, a couple of years ago such a power draw was normal for a high-end GPU. If I'm not mistaken, the GTX 780 from 2013 did consume this much power. Of course, the power consumption is dependent on the GPU voltage. If stability does allow, it would be a good move to lower the voltage. The temperatures would decrease too. So if you can overlook those drawbacks, an overclock can be a good choice here. But I can't really recommend going for it. The temperatures and power consumption simply is a bit too high for today's standards. But hey, I don't want to tell you what you should or shouldn't do. At the end of the day, it's your decision to make, whether or not overclock clocking is worth it here. There is a possibility of better Radeon 7 cards being out there that require less voltage. If that's the case, we could be looking at different results. But to get back to my question from the beginning, no, overclocking doesn't really come to the rescue here. To be honest, there's no rescue whatsoever needed. And as always, thanks so much for watching.